Welcome to Airway Breathing Conversation, a podcast presented by the anesthesiology residents at the University of Saskatchewan, created to provide individuals of all levels of medical knowledge with anesthesiology-related healthcare information. This episode is part of our abridged Grand Round series, in which highly knowledgeable and sought-after guest speakers present on a multitude of fascinating topics relevant to anesthesia. Join us for Grand Rounds this week, where Melody Auger, a staff safety associate and TLR instructor with the Saskatoon Health Authority, presents on TLR principles and moving techniques. Now, whether you are an anesthesiologist, resident, medical student, or member of the general public, come listen in as we demystify the incredible specialty that is anesthesiology one episode at a time. Well, it's a small crowd. I'm used to bigger rooms. Good morning. My name is Melody Auger. I'm a TLR instructor for occupational health and safety. And uh, part of my job for the Saskatchewan Health Authority is to ensure that all new workers have training in TLR. So some folks only need the general moving, which goes into the object moving. Others need to know how do I assess my clients and move them safely. So that's part of my job. I also do teach WAVE as well as safety for supervisors. Uh, I have two uh, co-workers with me today. I've got Kristen. Say hello and Christine, and they're going to help us when we go through a few of the different uh, techniques that uh, maybe help you guys while you're working. So the uh, successful program is all about understanding how safe body mechanics works, what your risks are, as well as uh, some of the safe moving techniques. So we, we can practice a few of those today. We have laws that we have to follow. So every worker in Saskatchewan has three rights. They have the right to uh, know what's going to be unusually dangerous when they're working. They have the right to know where they can report any injuries or incidents. And they also have the right to refuse anything they know would be unusually dangerous. So we all know about the importance of good posture and safe body mechanics. And it's already been mentioned that sitting for long periods of time while you're in that operating theater is hard on the body. So we need to identify how to get those risks under control so we can evaluate. So the legislation says that the employers have to make sure that you have the training necessary to ensure that you are working safely, as well as the knowledge of your three rights. You also have responsibilities. You must do no bodily harm to yourself or others by act or omission. So even when you guys go into the operating theater, you're already doing this process where you assess, select the information and the techniques that you're going to need for that operation, as well as getting prepared. I know a lot of the pre preparation in the operating room goes through uh, other workers, but you have your own setup that needs to be prepared prior to everything getting on the move. So afterwards, you need to evaluate and communicate. Evaluate usually only happens if you've done something wrong. Usually there's an error happened and then you evaluate. But it's always a good idea to figure out those good ones and make sure everybody understands them. So even when you're doing your good risk assessment, you want to make sure that you have the ability to do them not just once, but in the moment also and as the uh, operation is ongoing. So you would do your self-assessment prior to getting here. You do your environmental assessment once you get into that operating theater, checking your equipment throughout that operation as well as your client and their ability to breathe. So today what we're going to focus on is the uh, lifting and repositioning because that's usually what you're uh, doing in the operating room. So lifting may incorporate a mechanical device. If you do have a client that needs to be lifted, they should be lifted onto a stretcher prior to getting to you so that all you're doing is a repositioning. So diagnostic imaging has come down with that dictate. If that person can't get up and get onto the table by themselves, they're brought down on a stretcher so that the repositioning can happen much safer. So if you do have someone that you have to have the anesthesia given to them in a chair, uh, you might want to make sure that they come down on a stretcher or bed instead. So you wanna make sure you're wearing appropriate footwear and PPE. So often when we're in the operating room observing, we see that people are wearing clogs and dogs and all manner of footwear. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, closed toe, closed heel is safer for your own use because uh, the closed toe will protect your toes from any needles that may get dropped and uh, the heel 
protection is very important for ensuring that your knee and uh, ankles are protected as well. So whenever we're training our uh, staff, so your operating room staff will know that we go on one, two, three, and then a command word. Because we used to go on three, but that was either when you said three or after you said three, and there was never that concise communication, there was often a pause. So we filled that pause with a word. And sometimes that helps because it also gets your patient ready either to brace themselves or assist you. So you need to make sure that you uh, have everybody on board when you're doing one, two, three command. When you have assistance, all workers in this moving task have the right to stop any move that they feel is unusually dangerous when they have identified a risk. So you may have the operating room staff say, wait a minute, this isn't in place or hold on, we don't have enough people. Always make sure that everybody is involved in that move so that you have everybody pushing all at the same time. Um, you may need more than one worker whenever you have things like intravenous poles or extra equipment that needs to be moved, then you have to have more bodies. If evolution actually worked, we would have been born with more arms. Since we weren't, we need more people. So all workers involved must ensure that that is a safe move for themselves and they have the right to stop it at any moment if they feel that their safety is jeopardized. Our learning outcomes are good posture, reduce those dynamic and static muscle, and uh, making sure we're reducing the injuries of musculoskeletal. So even when you're sitting, you want to make sure that you try and have that neutral spine. A lot of people I see are perchers, so they're sitting right on the edge of that chair because it's easier to get up from that position than it is from the back of the chair. But you're not as well supported, so try and shuffle your bum right to the back of that chair to keep that nice neutral spine when seated. When you're standing, if you have to stand for long periods of time, see if you can't get a stool or a, a rail of some kind that you can put your foot up on so that you're offloading from one foot to the other. Try not to stand or sit for too long a periods because each one of those is hard on the body. When you're sitting for long periods of time, uh, you're sitting through such a small area, uh, the blood flow is not very good. So a mixture of standing and sitting whenever possible is a good idea. So what we want, try to avoid are the bending at the waist and bending and twisting. So if you've ever picked up a laundry basket, it probably looks like the guy in the center, or maybe you're uh, bending over to see if the, the table is going to move. Uh, each one of these is really hard on the spine. So whenever possible, try to avoid those by keeping that nice gentle S. So even when you're laying on your back at night, you're putting 25% pressure on your spine and discs. Once you roll over on your side, you're at 75% because now it's displaced through a smaller area. I'm standing at 100%. You guys are 140 because you're sitting. So whenever possible, try and relieve that back pressure by standing up and moving yourself around. When you're bending and lifting something inappropriately, then you're putting three to 400% pressure on your spine and discs. So that's not only whatever you're lifting, but it's also the weight of your torso and your head involved in that lift. So often we find that we have that dynamic movement, which is always moving, or we have static. So you're holding a limb for long periods of time. Each one of those has its own threats because uh, the dynamic motion is going to start irritating those uh, different um, body parts and their joints as well the static posture is going to start giving you less blood flow so you, you guys always think and plan ahead which is excellent whenever possible try and think about where your body mechanics are as you're standing so you, you want to make sure you have that safe stance with shoulder width apart with your feet make sure you're maintaining this nice curves of your body your spine by having ears over shoulders over hips. Use your core buttocks and thigh muscles as well as your calves to lift anything. Use a safe, effective grip, which is palms up or thumbs up and work within your own comfort zone. So that would be from your shoulders down to your mid thigh or from your elbow to the uh, tips of your fingers. When you're using a weight transfer, it's always a side to side motion or a front to back. Your feet don't move, just your body. So this is what it looks like to have the uh, safe body mechanics whenever lifting something. 
So MSIs are defined as injuries, illnesses, and diseases. So some of the preventative things that we have, find out how you're supposed to report your concerns. You can always call 1600 and report any incidents, even a near miss. Make sure that you, whoever's your supervisor is able to investigate to find out what it was that injured you because it may injure someone else. And then if there are corrective measures, please follow those because they've already investigated down to the root cause. So a risk is any factor that has the potential to jeopardize the safety of those involved in the moving task, and that includes everybody in that room. So when you're doing your self-assessment in the morning, ensure that you're including all of these risk areas. Figure out if any of these po would possibly cause an injury to me this morning. How am I going to manage it or eliminate that? So there is a stretching video built into your PowerPoint. I suggest you download that and have it available. It's a good stretching video prior to and after the uh, operation so that you're giving yourself that break from all of those awkward postures. So your environment is going to change. It could be those uh, violent or aggressive people. It's definitely probably the layout of where you are. The doorways are either able to move or not. Your floor, there's lots of clutter. So you're always looking at that room and area to ensure that you know where all of those risks are. So the color and lighting is important. So the glare after a while on shiny surfaces can often cause you to have uh, headaches or neck pain. So uh, ensure that you can see your monitor without any light reflecting onto it because that's going to start giving you a headache. Noises and distractions are one of the problems in the operating room. So ensure that the conversations that you're having are at a good uh, tone so that you're not uh, giving anybody else a distraction. And then make sure that the work surfaces are at a, a stable level for the uh, people doing the work. Whenever possible, use frictionless devices to move your patients. And then your equipment, is it accessible? Is, does it have the capabilities that you're needing it for? Has it been checked by maintenance? Is it ergonomically correct? And is the manufacturer's intended use being followed? So if you're moving an object, you wanna make sure that you understand the different risks in that. The size and the shape may cause you to have to get a cart because it's too hard to lift. Uh, the weight of it may be more than you can handle. The texture may be too slippery, the contents could shift, and the handles may break. So we want to make sure that if we have a task that is in a different location, that we're having uh, the ability to put it on, onto a cart to take it there. The distance to be moved is important as well. So if we're having to go through a lot of doors that have hydraulics, that's hard on the shoulder when you're trying to open and close doors. So the force to initiate or maintain a stop when it comes to beds and wheelchairs, it's always important to make sure that you keep a nice slow speed so that you're able to stop. Try not to use any um, ramps when going up and down. It's, it's hard to do that it's consistent pushing or pulling. So whenever we're moving, we always want to use that one, two, three command. And that way we have everybody in the group, including our patient, aware of when that move is going to happen. So we have several standard moving techniques that we teach. There's pushing and pulling, lifting and repositioning, and we want to make sure that we're doing good communication while we're doing that. So we've got a wheelchair here today that we're going to practice our pushing and pulling on. We're going to show you how the golfer's lift may uh, help you in the operating room, as well as the one-handed partial squat. We'll see how uh, the tripod and diagonal works for you, as well as doing some repositioning. So these are some of the different slippery repositioning devices that we do have available in uh, SHA. They can be ordered from our stores at, at any one of the hospitals here in Saskatoon. So the, the slip is uh, gel filled. The uh, blue tube and orange tube are uh, washable in the washing machine and uh, they are open-ended so they will roll along with the fold. You've been listening to Airway Breathing Conversation, a podcast hosted and presented by the anesthesiology residents at the University of Saskatchewan. Please note that while this podcast is run by healthcare professionals, it is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. 
We are very thankful to our guests for taking the time to share their wisdom with us this episode, and a very special thanks to you, our listeners, for tuning in. Don't forget to follow us and our associated USASC Anesthesia accounts on social media. You can find all our social media links on our Linktree page at linktr.ee slash abc underscore podcast. You can also find the department's social media links on their Linktree page at linktr.ee slash usask underscore anesthesia. We'll see you next episode, but until then, stay calm, take a breath, and always remember your ABCs.